Welcome. Today we are going to have our first tutorial for the semester and it is going to be on um, our first topic which is working with classes. Now in our working with classes lecture we had an example that was used to explain uh, all the terminologies as well as all the concepts that has to do with uh, working with classes in BB. So today we are going to walk through that example. Uh, today's uh, exercise, we all already have the code uh, on the lecture slides that are shared uh, on the course page. That is for the week two, um, the, both the tutorial uh, and then the lecture slides are all there. Anyone with a phone or any other equipment can basically uh, open that uh, le those lecture slides and begin to look at them as we program. So you already have the tutorial and the slides. So today we are going to go strictly by the tutorial. So I would expect everybody to run their Visual Studio now and create a new project. Um, for the sake of uniformity, let's all give it a new, uh, a uniform name. So let me see uh, in the tutorial. Right, we gave um, working with classes. That's the name of our new project. So that is the name we'll give to our new project. So let's quickly uh, open Visual Studio. So we will quickly uh, create a new project. And then, of course, this just makes sure Visual Basic is the uh, language selected in the installed uh, area. So we select Visual Studio just so that uh, some of you will not go and set up a C Sharp uh, project. So you have select the Visual Studio. Now, under it, we can just select the Windows, or under it, in here, you can just look for it. So. Uh, usually, I just select here just to make the things a bit fewer than they are. And then we make sure uh, Windows Forms application is selected. All right. So you select new project from the menu, and then this window here will pop up. So we create the name um, working with classes. So that is the name that uh, I gave to my project. Since we will be using this name in our code, um, I think we can all use this name just so that later on we would uh, have a uniform code. If you want, if you like, you can give this project any name at all you like, right? So that when we get to where we need to use that name, then we would go ahead and use it. So from here, uh, I, I usually don't make any changes to my location and to my solution name. I just leave them as they are. And then uh, you just make sure the create directory for solution is uh, checked, that's the checkbox. And then we go ahead and we hit OK. So once we hit OK, we just give it uh, a little time for it to load up. Now, once it's loaded, then we are good to go. So um, here, since we are going to work with classes, um, we can leave this window as it is, and then we will create our first class. Once we are here, uh, the first thing we need to do for this uh, example is to create a class. Now, how do we create a class? Um, the first step in creating a class is to go to your menu. Then on the menu, uh, you look for projects and then you click on projects and then you look for art class, right? Now, some versions, you might see something a little different, but uh, once you go to projects, you should see uh, something that uh, points to art class. So once we get there, then we click on the art class uh, menu item and then it will open this type of window for us. 
So once it is open, uh, you will see that the class um, is selected by default in the template area there. So to be sure, you just make sure it is selected. And then you come here to the name section or to the name text box and make sure you give it a name. So here, I, I would name my class student. That was the example we had uh, from our lectures. So you type student, just make sure you don't remove the .vb and leave the .vb there and just uh, click on add when you are done typing the student. So I want, I want to create a class called student. So I make sure this class here is selected and then I make sure I type the name of my class, which is a student.vb. All right, so once we do that, then we hit on add. So I'll click on add here. Now that should add a new class to my project. So this is what I will have after I click add. I will have uh, a code editor added to my project. And then I would have um, these codes written in the code editor. So you have public class student. Now this student here is the name that I gave to the class when I was creating it and then the end class. So that is the class declaration. Now, also, when, I, when you go to your Solutions Explorer on the other side of the page, you should see the new class added to the files. So it is just another file added to the project. So you would have the, the name of the class that you created, .db. So once we do that, then we can start creating the properties of our class in this particular area here. And as I told you when we were having the, the lectures, I said that uh, the class basically is just a description of all the objects in the class. So we usually set up what properties these objects will have and uh, what methods these objects will have, and then create constructors and stuff like that. Then we now go to the live part of our code, which is a certain form or uh, a certain application. And we now create objects from these classes. And then we use that to do whatever we want to do. So in our uh, class example, we started by creating some member variables. Um, we created about two of them. Or, no, we created about three of them. And then we later on created properties uh, for those member variables. And then we created some methods and constructed. So let's first start with those member variables. So we created variables, I think, uh, public variables at first. So we created public uh, str id as string. So we created uh, this type of uh, uh, that we said it is it was going to hold the student ID, all right. So we we um, use three properties of the student, which is the student ID, the last name of the student, and then the first name of the student to create this member variable. So the next one was I think uh, public uh, str uh, last name. A string. Then the third was same public uh, str. Uh, that's first name as string. So we created this, and then I indicated to you that once you create uh, these uh, member variables here and specify public as the uh, uh, asset specifier. What it means is that if we go to another class, we should be able to assess these um, variables here by going through any object that was created from the student class and then using the dot operator to assess these kind of things. So let's open a different class here. For instance, let's go to the form one class uh, so this is 
the form one class. Now I've messed up by clicking something here. So we could remove this. So we could remove whatever is there. So now we have a different class here called what? The public class form one, which is the form, the class that was created to actually work behind the form one class. All right. So here we will put all our um, uh, click events, our event handlers and other things. So that is uh, what we will call the live area of our project. So we created the student class with these three member variables. And then our user interface is accessed through here. So in here, we can basically create, um, let's say our user interface and begin to use these member variables that we created using the public to actually manipulate the values that are stored in the objects that are created from the student class. For instance, okay, let's say, let's say we want to create uh, in our example, we created a student uh, call, I think a uh, student object called fresh, fresh, uh, freshman or something like that. So here we could easily just create it as a global variable, for instance. So we create uh, time, right? All right, so we create freshman as student, right? Now this, student here is the name of the class that we created here, right? So basically we are creating a freshman as a variable of type student. So in any part of our code, we could basically uh, instantiate that uh, student by using the new keyword. For instance, let's say uh, we add uh, a button to from one class, right? And we name it maybe, uh, Let's say, what, what do we give this button? So let's say um, run, right? So let's just call it run. So that when we run it, it will create a class, I mean, an object from that class, and then it will maybe assign some values to that object or to the properties of the object. So for instance, if we come here, so this is the button that we just added the click event. So we could now instantiate this class by saying what freshman is equal to what new student, right? From our uh, previous list. So once we write this, what it means is that uh, in here, we have created a new object of the student class, right? So here we just created a variable of uh, type student and then we create an object from that student class, or we instantiate uh, the student class to create that object, right? When you say an object is an instance of a class, basically this is what you mean. So you've created an object from that class by using the keyword new, all right? So once you do this, this fresh student here would have access to all the properties that we have here. All right, so if I if I write something here, for instance, let me say, I just write this. Uh, if I type freshman, right? If you just type freshman and type dot, right? As soon as you type dot, you should see uh, some of the names that you created, right? Some of the variables that you created will be accessible at this side. So I uh, can see uh, the yes, first me. one, being str first name, str ID, and str last name. Yes. That is because we created freshman as an object from the student class. It means that object will have all the properties of the student class, right? So that is why we can see that. So if we create a different variable that is not of type student, right? That variable will not have access to all this, right? So for instance, let, let me just select this. Uh, maybe it's equal to, right? Who's student ID? Let me see. Yes, I can see some student ID here. So we have 0, 4, 0, uh, 1, 1, 9, right? Then 1, 8, 2, right? 
So we are putting it in uh, inverted commas because we created that property as a string, right? Remember, we created the student ID property as what? As string. So whatever value we assign to this must be a string. So once we do this, so for the fresh student, the property ID, SDR ID, would have this value, right? So we could do same for another uh, property. So we could have fresh man dot, right? Uh, STR name is equal to, um, what name do we give? The first name is, let's say, last name. Okay, I can see a table. Go here. Then the last variable, which is freshman dot str first name, right? Is equal to um Caleb. I can see some Caleb, right? Okay, so once we do this, basically we have created this freshman and then we have set it properties. Just like the way uh, we created this, uh, right. we created this particular uh, button here and then we set it properties, right? It's the same way. So these properties here, it's the same way we set them. So we can change the name, we can change the text, so these properties here, that is what we just did with our um, freshman object. So we created a student. So let's say student was one of the controls here or one of the objects here. You just pick and drop on the form and go to this area to set the properties. That is just the same as what we did here. We created a new object and then we set the attributes for that object. Now, what will happen is when you run this, right, nothing will happen. But we can output whatever uh, values that the user has put here, maybe by using a message box or something like that. Right? So we can try to run it. So we save and then we run it. So once you run it, you shouldn't see anything come up. So if you click on this button, basically you see nothing. Nothing will happen because you haven't really uh, done any output. But once you click here, uh, all these things here are now assigned to this freshman. So if you go and call freshman anywhere and you call that uh, uh, the ID of that freshman, it will now have this value. If you call it anywhere, you have the last name of that freshman to have this value after you set them using this button. The same way, let's say if I add a button, if I add another button here, let me just uh, test something here for us to see. Let me run it here. So after you have set, I mean, you have run it. So let's say you say show values. All right, so once we say, let's say show values, what happens now is, uh, we should be able to, if everything works well, we should be able to see the values that were set here when we click on this button, right? So let's go down this route and type message, the message box, the show, right? And we have this. So what, what do we show? So we show uh, freshman dot SDR ID, right? That's what we want. Then we concatenate it with some space, right? And then we concatenate it again. So let me put some space here before. We concatenate it again with what? Uh, the last name. So freshman. Dot last name. Right, then we concatenate it 
with some space, right? And then we have freshman dot first name. Okay. So once we are done, or we could concatenate it with some statement, maybe student details, or, or to put to put this here. So student details, right? So you just put it there, concatenate it here with some uh, spaces here, and concatenate it there. So you should remove all the errors from there by just doing that. So now once we run it and then we click on the first button, which is the run button, it will set all the parameters. And then once we click on the second button, if everything works well, it should bring us uh, the values that we set here inside uh, this uh, message box, right? Now I've not tested this. So let's let's hope it works. So once we run it, where is my run? It's missing somewhere. Okay. So once we run it, we click on this, and then it sets up. Good. And then we click on this. It should bring out some stuff. So I can see students details, then the ID, then the name, and then the item that we set here. So here, anywhere you see freshman, uh, you can have access to all the uh, variables that we created as public when we're creating uh, the student class, right? We can assign values to them as we did in the form one click event. Then we can actually retrieve values from them as we did in the form two event. Now we are able to do that because we created our uh, freshman variable uh, as a global variable yes, or as audio. a multi level variable. Let's say we want to create a, a student called level level 300 student, right? Or group A student, right? So we just type time um, group, group A student. as new student, right? What is wrong with my keyboard? All right, so let's say we, we write this. Now we have created another object, right? Just like the way we created this freshman, we created another object from the student class. So if we come down here and we type that object too, so if we type, uh, group A student and we type a dot, it should also have access to all the properties that were created uh, in the student class. Once we create it as a student uh, object, it's just like you yeah. adding three or four different uh, buttons on your phone, right? Each of the button will have access to the same button properties. It's just that we can set different values for those properties. Now, um, this is uh, from our last week's uh, lesson. I said, usually we don't implement uh, properties this way. So these, are, these usually are just variables that we use to actually implement the properties. But to implement the properties themselves, we have property procedures that we use. So usually we, we use these variables here. We hide these variables here from the other uh, classes that would want to use this, our new class. So in order to do that, we usually create them using the private uh, specifier, all right? So remember, we spoke about uh, the fact that we have two parts of a class. The first part is the implementation. The second part is the interface. So usually the member variables falls within the implementation, which are usually hidden from the other uh, user classes. So in order to do to create our new uh, properties, we would have to turn these variables here into private. And you will see very quickly that as soon as we turn these variables here into private, 
then they become inaccessible in the form one class, right? I hope you understand that because the form one can no longer see them when they are private. We can quickly do that. So instead of public, we go to private, right? And then we go to private. Then we go to private, all right? As soon as we type this, when we go to the new for the form one class, we should see that all our references to this will now be errors, right? Because they cannot be identified. Now, form one class cannot see uh, these things again. Yeah, so when you go to your code, you will see that all the areas where you, you, you refer to the properties have now been highlighted as errors, right? They were underlined. That means that the scope of these variables here now be, become what limited to this class. They cannot be seen from outside this class. All right, that's why we have these errors here. So um, how do we use, how do we create uh, properties? All right, so we, we use the uh, property procedures to try and create these properties, all right? So property procedures, uh, we say are the interfaces. So we usually create them with what? Public specifies. So a property is just like a sub procedure or a function, uh, but then it has a name property, not a function or a sub procedure, but then it will have a header, then it will have a body, and then it will have uh, a closing uh, statement. So for instance, we said a property would be a public, the public, right, property. So that's the key word that we use to uh, create properties. The public property, what is happening here? It's supposed to give me, supposed to give me that. Yes, public property, what name do we give the property? So let's say we'll call that the student ID, right? So that's the name of the property, all right? So after that, we would have the bracket, open bracket, close, just to show that uh, it has empty parameters. And then we will now have the as keyword, and then what is the return type for that property? And this one, because we said it should be string, so we we'll put what string because the user, our user ID is a string, right? And property. So we have get and get and set, get set. The intelligence, the intelligence is not working. All right, no problem. Let's let's try and hard code it and see how it goes. So you write a get and then end get and set and end set. As soon as I wrote the get, then it generated the rest. So let me write another one, public property. Then we will have what? Uh, student, let's say last name as spring. And then we'll have get, okay. So this one works. When I type the property header, I went ahead and type the get. As soon as I type the get, it, it generated everything for me. Everything that should have been generated from the top was generated only after I wrote the, the get. So we, we will take it like that for now. So you try that and see whether it works. Let's go back to our first property and see 
how we can sort it out. So the first property we will return inside the get, we will return the uh, SDR ID. Then inside the set property, we will set value uh, that is SDR ID is equal to what? Value, right? That is basically how we set it up. Now, what is what is happening here? So the get site would run anytime the user tries to retrieve a value from this particular property. And then the set site will run anytime the uh, user tries to set a value or try to assign a value to the property, right? As I explained last week. So we have both the get site and then the set site. Uh, the set site, so anytime we call uh, something like this, so if we write this kind of statement, basically it will go to the set site. That is, it will take this value. That is the student ID that we are assigning to it. It will take it and then bring it to this particular value here. Then it will now assign that value to the member variable that we are using to create it. Now, when we come to this side, let's say we come to this side and we are trying to retrieve that value, right? So the this part of our class, uh, our property will now be executed, which is the uh, the get side. We have these two codes. If you remember what we did with them just a few minutes ago. We first of all uh, created an object from the variable and then we assigned values to the properties of that object. The first property we assign a value to is the ID, then we assign the value to the first last name and then we assign a value to the last name, all right? So anytime we want to assign a value to a property, this side of the code is run, this side. So the property and then that side of the code. So we have the set value and then uh, SDR, that is the uh, variable that we want to use or the member variable, we equate it or we assign value to it. Meaning that whatever, let's say, whatever the user is trying to assign would actually be assigned to this parameter here. Just like when we are calling any sub procedure or any function, we pass a value to the parameter that is uh, in that particular function or sub procedure. So this is the parameter. So we'll pass the value to that parameter. And then we now use that parameter to operate. That is, we now assign that parameter to the member variable. Now the opposite happens when we want to get, that is in the next line of code that is here, where we now want to go in and retrieve the values that are stored in the properties. In that case, we will just return whatever is stored in those properties. That is what we do here. So we return this here. So the same thing will happen with this particular last name item here. So when we want to retrieve a value, we will return the uh, STR last name. So we return STR, STR last name okay that is it and then when we want to assign a value then we say str last name is equal to what value right that is basically how it works for all of them so we can create the same for uh that's public property property and first name That is as um, it's also string. Then we get, and then we set. So we do the same thing. That is, uh, you return when we want to uh, return it. When we want to uh, retrieve a value, you return the 
uh, member variable, which is the str uh, first name. All right, when we want to set, so we say str first name is equal to, to, to value. Value, yes. So the same thing, you can see the structure is building up, right? So when we are retrieving, we retrieve from here. When we are assigning a value, we assign it here. So the value we want to assign basically becomes this parameter, and then we assign that parameter. So let's let's add another property because last last week we had another property that was uh, I think single text average, right? So we have private. A uh, single uh, test average, right? As now we use the we use single, right? And this mm -hmm. here would be used to store the value as the average score for your examination. So let's say your first time examination ex uh, results. What was your average score, right? So we would create a property for that. So we would create a property that says what um, public right property. Then we have uh, test average. So test average as single right because we want to store uh a number which will represent your test score and that score would be between zero and a hundred right there's no way your average score can be more than hundred so we would actually uh, uh validate whatever the user will enter into that text i mean into this particular uh property so the return value it's still the same. So you will return a single test average, right? And then here, you will say single test average. Uh, what's the, uh, okay. Single test average is equal to value, right? But of course, as we said, we can validate this user input to be sure that it is between zero and then a hundred, right? So how do we do that? So we use our if else statement. So we say if value is what? If value is greater than or equal to zero, right? And then Value is what? Um, less than or equal to 100. Let's write 100. Then what should happen? Right? So since we are talking about single, so we need to introduce some decimal size to this because uh, this variable here will return a uh, single so we would have this all right so if this here if there's a value that is uh, greater than or equal to zero but less than or equal to 100 then it is the right value right so we should assign it now else if it is not the right value that is if it is out of that range it means it is not a valid exam score so you should actually go ahead and then print out some message to the user. So here we we'll assign only when it is between zero and hundred. If it is not between zero and hundred, then we'll go ahead and print out a message. So we say uh, message box or so, All right? Then we'll have uh, a message to the user that we say, okay, uh, please enter a valid uh, or maybe enter a number between zero and hundred, right? 
So the last uh, uh, property we we'll create would be the um, a read-only property that we we'll use to actually check your grade, right? So we would want to check the student grade, right? So we we'll use what test grade. So we say public. Read only property test grade, right? We want to see what grade this your average as character. We have get. All right, so here, uh, because we said read only, we are not going to have a set part. We are just going to have only a get part. Now, the reason why we are making it read only is that we had already set that value here. Oh, some, something interesting happening. I I and property, okay. Uh, all right, that's our problem. So when you um, want to create a read-only property, you would get only a get part, which means that there wouldn't be any value being assigned to this property. You can only retrieve values from the property. And we are doing this because we are going to use this member variable here, which is the single test average. And that is going to represent whatever the user will enter as a test average. So once the user enters that value as the test average, then we begin to use that to see the grade for that student. And what grade? So if the, uh, the test average is 50, then the student has a grade, maybe C, right? If the test average is 90, then the student has what? Grade A and stuff like that. So we can start our test. So we say if single test average greater than or equal to GTUC, we have 70, right? Then we would have um, return as A, right? Else Else if um, test average, a single test average greater than or equal to uh, 60, right? Then you return B, right? You have else if single test average greater than or equal to 50, then return, uh, what do we return? So we have A, B, and C. So we return C, else if, so we have, Single test average, average greater than or equal to 40. Then, you <clears throat> will have return D. Then, else. Uh, all right, so we have F, otherwise, right? Then F. Okay. So that is basically where we are now. 
So we would receive the value from the user for this particular property. And then we'll use that value to check what grade the student has obtained. All right, so these are all the properties that we would we would uh, create. At least uh, after this, at least everybody should at least be conversant with creating uh, this type of uh, property. Now, what you should notice is that these properties here, uh, I try to give them names that are devoid of uh, these uh, SDRs and things that are peculiar to programming, right? I give them names that are a bit clearer because the user is going to use those names to assess these properties. But then these other ones, the SDRs and the last, the SDRs and the singles and all those things, we leave them in the uh, private section where we are the only ones going to use them. So because we understand what we are doing, we can put anything here, but that will be hidden from the users of the class. But these ones, the property names, you must give them names that are uh, uh, self-explanatory, right? At least you get the users of the class to understand because they, at the end of the day, the user of the class or other programmers that are going to use this class, they need to know that, okay, if I just want the test average, this is what I call, right? get it if i want the uh the test grade this is what i call if i want the test average this is what i call if i want the first name this is what i call but all these implementation would be hidden from the user all right so now we are done we are done with creating our property so the next thing is to go to the form one class and try to rectify uh the issues that we created there earlier right so we'll go and change the property names from the member variables to these new properties that we created so that we'll, we'll rectify the issue. Then we'll add the new properties that we did not create that time. So we created freshman here, so that code still remains. We created, we instantiated freshman in this class, right? Then we will have freshman, so this time, when we type freshman, we are not going to have str ID. Now we are going to have freshman dot, right? So we have student ID, right? Which is this guy here. So you can see the new, um, you can see test grade, test average, student ID, uh, last name, first name. I hope you can all see the new properties have now showed up at the other side. So we can begin to use them. So we just change them to change the old ones to that. That right, to take away all the errors that we had. Freshman dot last name. Okay, freshman dot first name. All right, we can add. Freshman dot test average. All right. So what's the test average did this student have? So test average, we are since it is not a string, we won't put it in this. So we say uh, this particular person scored 64.0 as his test average. That is where it ends because we cannot assign values to the fifth property, which is this, because it is read only, all right? So we can only retrieve a value from it, but we cannot assign a value to it. So when we come here, we cannot assign a value to it. But here, when we are retrieving values, then we can retrieve, we can quickly retrieve a value from it, all right? So here we would have freshman, the same thing, freshman dot student ID, freshman dot first that's last name. Uh, 
Ashman Dutch. First name. All right. So we add the rest of it. So we concatenate here. Then we move and concatenate again. And then we have freshman. Dutch. Um, where do we go after this? So we have test average. Then we have that. And we have that. And we have another concatenator. Then we have freshman dot test grade. Right. <clears throat> so once we do that, we clear all the errors and then we can quickly run it. And then we see our new results. All right. So the ID should be this. Then the first last name should be this. First name should be this. The test average should be this. And then the test grade should be 60 is what grade? is 60 and above B. is B, yes. So that's what we get. So when we run it, so once you run it and you click here, you, should, you shouldn't see anything, right? Because there's no, there's no data, there's no data in them, right? That's why you are getting an error. So when you run it, you're supposed to be able to, you, you have to first of all, click on this. Now it's only after you click on this that you can click on this and it will work because you didn't assign values to them and then you are trying to retrieve values from them, right? That's why you get all these errors, all right? So student ID, last name, first name, test average and grade, right? So those are the new things that you have done. 